All right, the second part of our Super Bowl preview show is prop bets. One of my favorite things to talk about concerning the Super Bowl. I think the prop bets are a, a hotter market than even the, the lines of the game or the total of the game at this point, and not just player props, but a lot of weird novelty props as well. Um, I don't know how much we'll get into those tonight, but Rich Trojanowski is here to talk about prop bets. Rich, uh, it's been a second since you've been on the show. What's uh, what's new with you? How you been, buddy? I'm good. I'm good, Phil. Phil and Miller. I'm really, really good. So, you know, I just, I mean, nothing really new. Same thing. I, it's been a while since I've been on, but I don't know. Nothing changed. I mean, you're looking um, for for all the for all the YouTube viewers. You, I mentioned earlier, you're just looking really handsome tonight so i don't know what's changed but man you got a you got a vibe to you i'm digging it thank you so, thank you so much Phil. <laughs> i want to start um my my favorite one is uh mvp um yeah this is this is so much fun because usually when you're betting the mvp or talking the mvp it's it's usually the quarterbacks um and you know i was digging into this earlier um since 2020 so i guess that's that's what uh 22 super bowls um since 2020 uh the quarterback has won every year except i believe seven instances um we've had receiver and a, a few defensive players win a few times most of the time it's um it's the quarterback obviously the two quarterbacks are the favorite Stafford and I'm going off of DraftKings here Rich DraftKings uh, Matthew Stafford at plus 100 and Burrow at plus 225 um it's funny though I I've always had the thought if if you think the underdog is going to win the game that you you would just bet the underdog's quarterback um instead of the game to win MVP because yeah. the odds are better in my mind, if you think the Bengals are going to win this game, it almost makes more sense to just bet Joe Burrow at plus two twenty-five and that have have that be your your lead bet. Um, what's your thought there between with that strategy? Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I mean, it's 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 pictured that way with the people that are setting these numbers here. So, you know, just there, uh, I really think. Me personally, I think the Bengals are going to win. Who who you on? Before we get in deeper, like what like who who you going with? <sighs> Either not the spread, but just money line because honestly, a four point spread is a toss up, right? I mean, kick a field goal at the end of the game and you measure your yeah. points up. But money line is paying negative two hundred and plus one seventy five for the Bengals. So you know that's far better bet than betting the spread so which one are you picking rams or Bengals? i i think the rams win the game um I'm i i think Bengals. i yeah i i think that i've i've looked at this a lot i feel like the rams are just better across the board in almost every uh position um you can debate quarterback even if you want to say burrow is better I, i'm fine with that but pretty much i feel like every position across the board i, I except maybe safety I would say the Rams are better. I think the coach is better. Um, so, right, so sorry to stop you, but wide receiver, you're going to say Rams? Are that's close. Receiver than, okay. That's close. Well, I mean, you could argue, you could argue that Cooper Cup had he had a historic year. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely historic oh, year. And Odell Beckham has looked as close to what he was in his peak form in, say, 2015, 2016, as he has this year. He's been open a lot. He's been pretty uh, dynamic, and his performances in the playoffs have really showed that. Uh, so I, I think yeah. you, if you want to say wide receivers a wash, I, I'd be totally fine with that. Um, but so I, I, I like but the Rams. MVP, but for MVP – the best wide receiver option is going to be Cooper Cup, right? I mean, like there's no other option besides him for wide receiver to get the MVP, right? I mean, well, that's that that, that's what that's what we're here to talk about. Cooper yeah. Cup at Cooper Cup at plus six hundred. Um, Odell Beckham at plus twenty eight hundred, though, is uh, it's got to be discussed if you think the Rams are going to win. Uh, Beckham 
it's conceivable he has like a seven catch 105 yard game with two touchdowns I just think that's 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 a number that you have to consider um if you think and, and in my mind, Rich, I think wide receiver is the next likely position to win MVP uh, past quarterback, don't you? Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, I, I saw on Mayo, he they were talking about how it's only happened three times since Super Bowl nine that a wide receiver has won MVP. And I mm-hmm. mean, if, if anybody has the opportunity to do it, it's, it's Cooper Cup. So, you know, but plus 600. I don't know if that's that's worthy of it over, you know, the winning quarterback that threw to him, you know, even odds. And even if if we think that the Bengals are going to win, then obviously Joe Burrow is going to, you know, be the, the Super Bowl MVP at that point. Unless Jamar Chase, you know, he had how many how many games did he have three touchdowns? And, you know, what if he throws up another three touchdown game? 18, uh, 18 to one. So I do. Yeah. I do want to talk about chase and Higgins as uh, possibilities. If you, if you, if you like the Bengals here, the, the Rams play statistically uh, zone coverage, I think the second highest rate in the NFL this year. Um, also with Jalen Ramsey being who he is, I, I don't know if they do, they take the strategy where they're going to man up on um, uh uh, Jamar Chase and just let the you oh, know they're shutting, sit. they're shutting him down. Like, I mean, if, the, if that's the a strategy, him. then T Higgins at forty-five to one becomes somewhat of a possibility of, as a as a long shot in my mind. Sure. Um, I'm $1? I'm Fine. I'm yeah I'm I'm, I'm, I'm almost <laughs> more <laughs> I'm almost more interested in Higgins at forty-five to one than Chase at eighteen to one. To be quite honest with you, sure. Um. The the running back position has not won MVP since Terrell Davis uh, won MVP in I think it was ninety eight. Um, that was the first uh, first of the Broncos Super Bowls, right? Yeah, the second it one was John Elway. Yes. Yeah. So you know, I, I was I was thinking of Joe Mixon at forty five to one, but it just seemed like a likely path for the running backs in this game to win, whether it's Acres or Mixon or even Sony Michelle. Although it seems like Acres has reclaimed his role as the number one, um, so I don't I don't I don't think the running back position is going to be on the radar for me. Um, it just seems like this is a game where it's going to be decided through the air, and it's going to be the quarterbacks or the receivers. Um, it's like they have a lot of points. <laughs> Um, I don't, I think, you know, normally the Super Bowls in the first quarter, and this is one of the props I want to talk about later is, um, there's a lot of jitters, you know, first quarter last year was a little different, but usually it's kind of a sloppy, slow start. Um, I, I actually think the under could hit, um, and, and then whatever the, whatever the number is, say at the end of the first quarter, if it's three, zero, I think then the, the live over might play, um, it's kind of it's kind of my weird mindset is take the live over, but also I think the under might hit. Um, what I was going to tell you, what I was going to say though, Rich, I was surprised to see Jalen Ramsey at a hundred to one. Is there a scenario here where, let's say Ramsey has one of those games where he has like three pass deflections, he has a pick six and pick six in the second quarter. Um, and then he has a pick late in the game to, to seal a Rams win where he has two picks, a touchdown, a few pass deflections. Is there a path where Jalen Ramsey could win the MVP? We haven't seen a defensive back win since I believe it's Dexter Jackson in 2003. He was a safety. Um, it's not, it's not likely, but I love long shots. I love, I love a hundred to one number. It's kind of fun. Um, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people like Jalen Ramsey, but it would give you a reason to root for Jalen Ramsey to have a good game. Well, I mean, just, just to say about the hundred to one, my, my favorite one is neither team to score a touchdown and we'll, we'll get to that, but that's my favorite hundred to one right now. You know, there's a possibility that both teams, you know, oh, wow. it's possible. You know? Just like we're saying that, you know, there's a possibility that Jalen Ramsey could, you know, get the, the MVP, but really, I really do believe you, you touched on it, that the MVP is starting to become driven by, you know, 
far more public influences than it, it may have been in the past. Um, when who was the other defensive back? Oh gosh, I'm thinking. Was there another defensive back that? There's um, been some um, linebackers. So Malcolm Smith won in 2014 okay. for the Seahawks. Von Miller, of course, in 16 when he was yeah. he killed. Um, I think he ripped out Cam. He ripped out Cam Newton's soul that game, didn't he? In the yeah, yeah that, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, he's 45 to one. So he's 45 to one. His chances. I mean, yep. uh, I've been going like I watch uh, Scott Van Pelt, and they keep talking about the possibility of Von Miller having, and he's really progressed from when he got there to when we're now, you know, I think last game he had like a sack, I think, and some other big plays in the game before that, he had some other better plays than the one before that. So, you know, maybe he's getting the, uh, the feel and, and that's a good one, you know, but on Super Bowl MVP, I'm not sure I'm betting anybody else than the quarterback. You know, I just I, I don't think <laughs> after I after all that, I was going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald's the only other prolific. But the problem is, is I, I'm I'm trying to stay in a lane. Okay, so I'm trying to say that this is what I think is going to happen, and I want to try to move my bets that way. And if I feel like Aaron Donald is is disruptive in everything he does, which is what happens. I mean, I'm sure he walks down the sidewalk and he disrupts like plants in the in the ground. You know, so. Like he will change other bets that will occur that I want that I want to play. You know what I mean? Oh, sure, sure. I I see that mindset and that that thought process. I also I I just usually play numbers. And um, Aaron Donald, let's play this through. He's he's sixteen to one. He is a generational talent. He is arguably the best defensive player of the last 20 years. 20, JJ, what? Okay. Fine. Stop it. Okay. Stop. Come on. All right. All right. I said, I said, arguably let's say, yeah, let's, right. let's say Aaron, let's say the Rams win Aaron Donald gets the Super Bowl. He's been defensive player of the year three times, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's say he he has three sacks, a forced fumble. I always think of what are what what's the path for Aaron Donald winning? He's gonna have to get multiple sacks. He's gonna have to be dominant and disruptive all night. He might have to get a strip sack, a fumble recovery, whatever it may be. He's he wins MVP. All of a sudden, at age twenty nine, he is he is in the pantheon of all time defensive players. And, and Rich, here, here's who I think. Of, I think of Lawrence Taylor, who, you know, a, a little predates us a little bit, um, but for all accounts, Before the best, sure. <laughs> from, from all accounts, probably the best defensive player ever. Um, and, and then I have Reggie White right there as well um, behind him. I, I think Aaron Donald, if he, if he would, if the Rams win, somehow he wins MVP, you're, you're putting Aaron Donald at least in the conversation. And he's a Hall of Fame player at 29 if he retired. Um, it's got the hell it had to have a hell of a game for that to happen, I understand. But there, I think of the narrative as well that goes along with this as well. Um, so Aaron Donald to me is interesting. A few of these guys have interesting numbers, but yeah, if you want to play it safe, Super Bowl, or the Super Bowl MVP is probably going to be to Stafford or Burrow. Um, by position, Rich, quarterback is at minus 300. Wide receiver, as we talked about, is the next best. You could just go any wide receiver to win at plus 250, and that covers the four guys we talked about. Um, or you could go with defensive linemen at plus uh, plus 1,000, which would kind of cover Donald and say, I don't know, Trey Hendrickson from the Bengals having a huge game. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of different routes there. Um, you like Burrow, it sounds like. I like I like a combination of of probably Cup, Beckham, and uh, long shot on uh, Ramsey. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Tell me about some player props you like in this game. Um, could be just traditional. This guy over a certain amount of rushing yards. This guy under receiving yards. What are, what are a couple of ones that, that you liked in your research here? 
definitely liked um, Joe Burrow rushing attempts two and a half over rushing attempts two and a half. Hmm. They have used him, or <sighs> the argument is that, you know, quarterback Niels can come into play too, you know, and that can count as a rushing attempt hmm. if, you know, they're, well, that'd be more for Matthew Stafford if we feel like the Rams are actually going to, you know, be the ones that win this game and they win handsomely because of the favorites, you know, but, you know, two and a half um, rushing attempts for Joe Burrow is a good one I like, but Cooper Cup has been putting up receptions all season long. So the over under is eight and a half and I like the value in eight and a half over at plus 110 versus the under at um, minus 140. So, you know, I'd rather, I think that they're going to use him all over the place and he will have nine as a stretch, huh? Nine. A lot of, that's a lot of catches, but he's, yeah. I mean, he's been doing it game after game, right? But nine, nine's got to be Super Bowl MVP worthy, right? That's, that's, that's my thought. I mean, you're talking nine catches of probably at ten, least 100 yards. Ten yards. Yeah. 10 yards apart, like, 12 yards a catch. Right. So okay. Like, so, like so Cooper Cup receptions. Yep. He, he, like is, he is un, he's unguardable. He's been unguardable. He is. Yeah. yeah. And if, if, if we think it's going to be a, um, you know, just shootout almost, I mean, I don't think the defenses are going to allow a shootout, but I think we're going to be going back and forth where the running game honestly probably won't be as big of a factor as the passing game will, and that's going to be more favorable for crossing routes and out routes and dig routes and, and things like that, where they need first downs on third and five, and Cooper Cup is, is that man, you know? I do love this one. That While we're talking about Cooper Cup, because I wrote this one down, Cooper Cup, longest reception over 28 and a half yards. Uh I don't know if you've seen these playoffs, Rich, but uh, Cooper Cup has uh, he's been he's been exceeding that for his longest reception, well, well over that mark. Um, I I I couldn't believe it when I saw it. To be honest with you, that's at it, it's pretty juiced. It's at minus one hundred and forty, so you're not you're not getting a ton of value on it. But um, put that put that maybe in the same game parlay with with something else you like. Um, I'll be hammering over twenty eight and a half uh, for Cup. On his longest reception yeah i think so i mean but there, there's that one reception he had to to win the game against uh tampa, tampa. bay mm -hmm. yeah and but they were running a zero coverage like they let him run sure. right right by them and that, that that that's a little caveat right i mean that's a little bit of a caveat there sure who runs a, a zero cover defense on like I don't know, eight seconds left in the game or 15, 20 seconds left in the game. Like, it was it's yeah. not, it's, questionable for sure. Yeah. It, it, yeah. What else you got? Um, this is more of a team one. I got Rams total sacks. Um, they're at three and a half. I like the over. It's only plus 105. So the under, I mean, again, when I was looking at these, I'm like, okay, you know, these are prop bets. So why would I want to pick these, you know, non-value picks where I'm gonna like barely win anything I want to like combine some and stuff you know and mm -hmm. but at least the Rams three and a half over I liked um plus 105 I think that Aaron Donald's well the, ma the main reason is because they've given up so many sacks in the playoffs and granted another caveat the Tennessee game they gave up nine that that kind of tips the scales but honestly I think the Rams are going to be bringing pressure, especially with their secondary. And if Jalen Ramsey can shut down Chase, then they're certainly going to be bringing pressure. Yeah, and, and the Bengals, their line is it's not good. I, I mean, I know they've made it this far, but it's not good. No. Uh, we, we all saw that Titans game. Um, they Burrow managed to get away from a lot of pressure uh, two weeks ago against the Chiefs. Yeah, I, I I like that one. I like the over three and a half for sure. All right, um, go. next one. Yeah, go ahead. McPherson. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was waiting to see. I, I knew a kicker prop was coming. I knew it was going to be him. Yeah. yeah, over 50 plus field goal made. 
Mm -hmm. He is, I mean, he's 84% on field goals for the season, which is middle of the road, but longest 58, three for three, the postseason for over 50 yards and 12 for 12 in the playoffs. So, and from the eye test, there's going to be moments when they're on the 40, you know, 35 yard line and they're ready to, to decide to kick the field goal and they know he can. And there's going to be opportunity for him to kick a 50 yard field goal at least one time. And the chances are he's going to make it. So I like it at plus 140. I mean, that's, that's a, that's really good. That's a good number. That you win. Yeah. So you win 70. Yeah. Um, was that, I'm sorry, was that just McPherson or was that just either kicker? That was only McPherson there. Okay. I don't know. Oh, I found that on DraftKings, so I got to go find it again. Another thing, I, I was going to do search, like research and I almost feel like it changes, but maybe it doesn't. Oh, or yeah. There's just so many options. There's like millions of options here. There, there's so many options. While we're talking about kicking, okay, um, I'm going to go to uh, the Bengals punter, Kevin Huber. Okay. Longest putt. <laughs> Putt. Did I say putt? Punt. Yeah, Gol- golf's always on my mind. The longest yeah. punt will be over 52 and a half yards. Um, he is he's cleared 52 and a half yards in 13 of 20 games this year. So 65% of the time he has cleared a 53 yard punt. Uh, I'll take that for Kevin Huber. Um that's that's not even the most random one. I got some, I got some other ones. Um, uh, another one that I liked, Rich, was um, any player to rush for a hundred yards. Uh, no, that's at minus two twenty five. Massive. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's a massive favorite. Um, I, Mixon. I don't think he's going to be able to run against this defensive line, and. Cam Akers doesn't necessarily scare me a lot. I loved how he looked um, against the Cardinals in their wild card game. I was like, oh my God, Cam Akers, he looks like he looks like he did before he he tore his Achilles. And then Tampa, he really struggled. And I didn't, I didn't I didn't see a lot uh, against the 49ers as well. So I'm not really worried about either running back here running over hundred yards. So at minus 225, again, that's probably a parlay piece. In the same game. I did come up with one parlay that I really enjoyed, and it is OBJ getting a touchdown in his score and the Rams first quarter negative 0.5 for plus 318. Oh, the Rams to cover a a half point. Yeah, in the first quarter. So they're going to leave the first quarter and OBJ will score a touchdown in the game. And so you put 50 up, you're winning 159. Okay. I really liked that parlay. That'll be on my picks, my best bets. (laughs) Your best bet. Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase will have more rushing yards than Cooper Cup. That is at minus 160. Um. I, I, he's, uh, Cooper Cup has only had two rushing attempts that were longer than two yards all season long. Um, Chase has had seven that are longer than two yards. Four of those in the playoffs. I think this hits. I think Chase gets at least, I, I'd say, two chances at, at an end around. And Cup might not even. I, I don't I don't I haven't I didn't, I didn't see how many games he's gotten a, a rushing attempt in, but I think this hits pretty easily. That's at minus one sixty. You mentioned Joe Burrow as far as rushing rushing attempts. Actually, I wrote down under on rushing yards at twelve and a half at minus one fourteen. You think he goes over that? I don't know about yards, but we're talking about just attempts. <laughs> I understand. I understand. So. Um, 12 yards, no. What about Stafford? What is he what is he at? Okay, well, Stafford, that was let's let's pull that up because that's something else I wanted to talk about. And I wanted to talk about him. Um so you said under on Joe Burrow 12 and a half, right? Under on Joe Burrow, 12 and a half rushing yards. I know he had a couple scrambles in the Chiefs and the Chiefs games. That was that was it was really critical, but I I just don't see him scrambling a ton in this game for whatever reason. Um, 
rushing yards. Matthew Stafford at over under at five and a half. Yeah, five and a half. Oh man, you know what? I was which one I, was it? I, 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 I wouldn't feel good about going over on that. Yeah. He's his flat out doesn't run. Do you want to do you want to hear my long do you want to hear my long shot play <laughs> <laughs> on Matt Stafford? Matt Stafford to score two or more touchdowns, 80 to one. I'm not talking about passing touchdowns. I'm talking about yeah. he's got he's got to score it. So there's been a, quite a few games this year where Matt Stafford has had a quarterback sneak for a touchdown. Okay. Say in the second quarter, they go up 14 7. Stafford sneaks it in from a yard. Let's say the third quarter, they're down there at the four yard line. It's third and goal. Sean McVay has been, he's been sitting on a play, Rich, all season long. It's like the Philly special, basically. It's like an end around to Odell. We know Odell can throw the ball a little bit. He get, he's got Stafford sneaking out there. Stafford catches uh, a touchdown. He gets his second touchdown of the game. That shit hits at 80 to one. I'm betting so it. So tying, betting it. tying into it, any non quarterback to throw a passing touchdown plus, I mean, it's four, 14 to one. I mean, yeah, I, I, I like, I like that too. You know, you know, there, I, I was doing more research into it though. And honestly, there isn't a lot of players on either team that have even taken passing attempts you know, even this season or, or their career. And I just feel like the Super Bowl opens up for that, you know, and like you said, o Odell has, you know, some history, but they just, I, I feel like either there's some sort of trick play. Oh, Most yeah. likely it's, it's a, it's a lineman going out to the flat, you know, and for a touchdown, but the, any non quarterback to throw at 14 to one. I mean, I like it. I, I, don't, I definitely don't mind that either, actually. I mean, I, uh, the Rams have traditionally broken out uh, maybe one trick play a game. I just I just think McVay and even Zach Taylor are sitting on something, um, you know, something up their sleeve here. So you what think else? it's an Odell, Odell reverse pass to the other side of the field Indeed. to Stafford? Uh, you, just, I mean, you just laid it out exactly. <laughs> um i did Which, get into these like double results where you pick like a a um each quarter or a score no you the, the first what is it score at half and score at end you know who's going to win the score at the front at the half and who's going to win the score at the end and i really really believe we got the rams coming out quick and then cincinnati winning the game I, I want to get back to this just lane of, of what I want to choose, you know, on, on picks for, for profits, because you do the same thing for golf, right? I mean, you just kind of think, okay, iron strikers are going to win this um, tournament or you know, long bombers are going to win this tournament. I hear it on your podcast sure. all the time. Sure. So, I, I, I okay. laid out, I laid out for everyone how Luke List was going to win that tournament a couple of weeks ago at, at uh -huh. 70 to one. And it, 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 you're right. It went down that path. Exactly. I said, if you, if you put the guy in a lab and created a golf course, it was Tory Pines and it, it worked out. It doesn't always work out, but I see what you're saying. So what's, tell me, tell me how the, the game flow in your mind is going to go. So do you know who Mattress Mac is? I, I do. Okay. Okay. All right. He's from Houston. He's a big, uh, I've known him. All big life. guy, big deal in Houston. <laughs> yeah. 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 So he's got 4.5 million on the Bengals. And <laughs> I read these stories. They had to like go make all these separate bets. You know, no one's going to take a four and a half million dollar bet, but so I really like the Bengals money line at plus 175. I really don't know if it's still there. You know, I don't know if it's the same amount, but Plus 175 is the last time I saw it. And I really like that outright win there. So that kind of like takes me down routes that I want to go in re response to, um, well, McPherson. I like that one pick there. Oh, but mm -hmm. first touchdown scorer. Okay. This was a, a big one for me where I felt that there's a possibility that there's a non main 
person to score the first touchdown, whether it's one of the backup tight ends for the, um, for the Bengals, which um, have plenty of touchdown red zone touchdowns because Zuma is, you know, questionable or yeah. how healthy he is. Yeah. So, you know, or even with like Van Jefferson, just that opportunity outside of mm-hmm. the normal in the Super Bowl. So Van Jefferson's at 16 to one. I like him the best to be the first touchdown scorer. And I know I got kind of off traffic with the flow, but again, <laughs> these, these prop bets just like, they take you down all these different paths, you know, there's so many of them. And, you know, I, I'll get back to the whole lane like theory you know but I, I just wanted to get on to the first touchdown score i think so you like you like van jefferson he's 16 cur- to one yeah and, and actually his, his number on DraftKings is 18 to one right now oh, okay. um yeah i i van has uh he's scored a couple first touchdowns this year i know um scored, scored against the opening game at uh, the bears the opening game of the season with the with the bomb um i i think it's a good number I, I'm I'm in on it. I'm I'm really I I'm I'm back to Odell on first touchdown at plus nine hundred. I love it. He's been a he's been more of a red zone threat the last five six weeks for the Rams uh, than Cup has. Cup's scored his on longer plays, I guess. When they're in the red zone, Odell is just such a big presence down there. Um, I don't know. That's it. Really, first touchdown. I love it. It's so much fun. It is. It is such a roulette wheel, though, Rich. Mm-hmm. And it, it's so hard. I mean, you think there's there's probably six guys on the Rams that could score, and then there's five yeah. guys that on the Bengals. So it's you're talking one out of eleven, really. Um, and then something fluky happens where there's a pick six, and you know that kind of thing happens. Um, I had a couple game. We can get back to your game flow in a second here. <laughs> um, which, which team will call the first timeout? I saw that one too. I, I, I was thinking. I, I love the Los Angeles Rams on this one to, to call the first timeout. Um, I saw a stat where Sean McVay, I, can you believe this is a stat? Sean McVay leads all head coaches with 2.9 unnecessary timeouts per game. Wow. <laughs> And I don't know what's what, I, I don't I don't know what an unnecessary timeout is considered, but we've seen that McVeigh is kind of liberal. He's kind of liberal in using the timeout. So, um, well, he's very liberal in um, uh, calling challenges. He's pretty. Well. Per, he had a he had a rough that, yeah. yeah he had a rough challenge game against the Niners. But I, I so yeah I, I like the Rams um, to call the first timeout minus one fifteen, and I also. Oh, the first play of the game to be a pass. Oh, yeah. First play of the game to be a pass. I saw it plus one fifteen, and to me, I think that's like a no brainer. I don't know what you think, but um, you know, to me, both both these teams prefer to throw the ball. I think I saw that the first play has been. I pass in, I think, five of the last seven Super Bowls. It's such a it's such a hard thing when it's on – there's about one play like that, but – Yeah. Well, I mean, it all – I guess we got to break it down to who's going to win the coin toss, you know, which is the most favorite uh, thing to bet on. But I don't even want to talk about coin toss, to tell you the truth. But the – so getting back to the game flow, if we feel like <laughs> – there's no game flow with coin toss you know so, you know let's say the Bengals win the coin toss i do think that they're going to run the ball first if the rams mm-hmm. win the coin toss then i still think they're going to run the ball first what are they at negative 140 to run the ball first is that what it is at? i think i think it was something like that yeah i, I already yeah. clicked off of it yeah i, I really don't think I, th- I think the starting of the Super Bowl is going to be a run with these two teams. Like they can and will run the ball as much as he can. Okay. The game to be I tied. Disagree with you, by the way. That's fine. I hear that. The game. <laughs> the game to be tied again after zero zero. Uh, yes, at minus one one twenty five. I say yes because pretty much what the last. I don't know, 
six games of this playoffs have been coin flip games and yeah. they've all been down to the wire. I don't, I don't see anything in this game that I think it's going to be a blow. I think it's at least going to be close mm-hmm. after zero zero. So I think it will be tight again after the start of the game. So I, I like yeah. that one uh, at my, yep. Minus one twenty five. Oh, what else did I have here? Um, so another thing about the flow is if we're taking the Bengals, then we have to believe that Stafford is going to lose the game for the Rams, right? And that's how the Bengals are going to win. You know, it's going to be a fumble, turnover, reception, turnover mm-hmm. of some kind, or, you know, mm-hmm. just a terrible call by the, 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 the Detroit Lion Stafford that we know and love, you know, so. <laughs> right. Um, so I, I, I'm going to go that route as well that I think, you know, you know, uh, which one. So, again, that's going to open for sack opportunities at the end of the game, uh, mm-hmm. prop bets, interception mm-hmm. at the end of the game, prop bets, fumble interception at the end of the game prospects. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think if the Bengals are winning, I hate to say that, but I feel like it's going to be because Stafford made a mistake. No, I, I, I think I, I've seen enough of Matt Stafford. Okay. For a long time. And, and I, I, yeah, he had, he had a really good year. I, I also saw enough games this year where he gives you, he gives you a throw or two. He really does. Yeah. But you remember that, remember that Titans game um, during the regular season where he was awful. I mean, he threw, threw a, one of the worst pick sixes I've seen all season. Well, other than until yeah. Kyler, Kyler Murray trumped him in the playoffs. Um but yeah, Stafford, he can he can uh, he can turn into a pumpkin real quick. Um, so yeah, if the Bengals win the game, there's probably something that Stafford did to uh, to potentially ruin that. At the Here's end my... of the game, though, not just oh sure he sure yeah. okay okay. I love the cross sport specials, Rich, with the Super Bowl. Um, and of course, my sport being golf, I, I love a couple of these. Um, <laughs> I, I, will, I didn't even look at them. Will okay. Will Will Jordan Spieth have more first round birdies at the Phoenix Open, or will Matthew Stafford have more rushing yards? Um, so we said Stafford rushing yards at five and a half. I said I liked it under. I think you did too. Um, this is a golf course that these guys will make five, six birdies on. So I love, I love the Jordan Speed first round birdies uh, at minus one ten over Matthew Stafford rushing yards. These are so six, fun. These are so fun. Six birdies. Yeah, five or six, six birdies. birdies right? Yeah, I think so. Does it tell yeah. you like? And they, they also have uh, Joe, uh, uh, Justin Thomas versus Joe Mixon receptions for yeah. you know Justin Thomas birdies. Um, John Rom birdies versus total touchdowns in the game. There's a lot of fun ones with golf up here, uh, but the the speed yeah. one I like oh, against NFL Matthew Stafford. Here, yeah. I found it. Yeah, that sounds good. What else? What else do you have on your list, sir? Uh, okay, I've got first two scores: Cincinnati or LA. Cincinnati, obviously LA's favorite, but Cincinnati's putting up 105, so nothing major. But any anything to touch on that? Say it again. I, I your sound cut out for a second. First to score. A oh, first Cincinnati. to score. Yeah. Just which team? Team. Yeah. Team. Hmm. I don't. I don't have a good feel. I. I, I don't. I don't know. This depends on the toss and who gets the ball first. I there was yeah. there there was a, a one that I liked. There's no score in the first. I think six minutes of the game. I do like oh, that. Yeah. I did have one like that. I had score in the first five minutes of the game. <laughs> so you do I like that and see, game. I like the opposite. I like the opposite. Yeah. Oh yeah. Point scored first five minutes on FanDuel was plus 184. I don't know. I mean, okay. I'm going to stay away from it obviously because I mean, there's just, I don't know. I think no. there's going to be a lot of points opportunities. So it's there. Um, Gatorade. We're gonna go talk about the Gatorade or not? Go ahead. I, I, I truly love the fact <laughs> that you can bet on who, what what color Gatorade is gonna get poured on the coach. You know, <laughs> it's crazy. I, do you um, have the Do you have the numbers on that? So apparently, blue has been the most 
commonly used one since it occurred i think okay. in like uh like nine years ago or whatever mm -hmm. the stat was but um and it's been the last like two in a row or three in a row but the, the article i was reading that kind of got me onto this was talking about how you know quarterbacks are king you know they they control lots of the aspects of the game and you know, maybe they control the color of the, the gatorade so there's not any um video of joe burrow during his winning times there's no gatorade being thrown around but stafford has one instance where the uh, they, they made the playoffs in their third his third or fourth season and the first time in like I don't know 15 years or whatever and they poured yellow Gatorade on the coach at that moment so they're saying that if the Rams win which this guy was all about the Rams winning so get, again same path they're saying yellow is going to be the color and I like it too it's plus 490 yellow is my favorite and I think that's going to be, I, I, I put easily, I'd put money on yellow 490. So. <laughs> uh, I thought you said Seriously, you weren't, I, like I, it. I thought you said you weren't going to get into the novelty props. Oh, I think it was the national anthem one we were talking about, but <laughs> I, I really like the, the same idea. I, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, that's that money money's going on yellow gatorade pouring on that coach at plus 490 it's happening okay so. you didn't want to talk about the national anthem so i sure shit will mickey guyton is singing the national anthem by the way i don't know who she is i don't know who the <laughs> hell she is um I, I don't know if you do but i don't have I a don't. lot of I don't have a lot of information on Mickey Guyton, but I do have a lot of information on the national anthem, Rich. Over under is at 95 seconds. There is some concern because she did perform the national anthem at a Memorial Day concert where she clocked in at just 76 seconds. That's concerning. However, however, historically speaking, Rich, this, uh, the anthem has gone over that, uh, that time, which is, again, uh, 95 seconds, one minute, 35 seconds. Um, it has gone over in seven of the past nine renditions, and several have taken over two minutes. Uh, I don't know how you don't bet the over here on the national anthem. Like I said, I'm a little concerned that she did it in just 76 seconds recently, but for the Super Bowl, it's going to be maybe a little bit slower, more dramatic, a little bit more of those long, you know, I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to sing it myself, but, you know, the pieces where they, they really draw it out. And um, so I think this goes over 95 seconds. So I will take uh, over. Is it? There is, is a prop for will Mickey Guyton omit a word from the national anthem? Yes, at plus 625. So let's say she gets a little nervous up there. Um, you know, we talked about Super Bowl nerves in the first quarter of the game. Well, maybe she's going to be feeling a little nervous. She's going to forget a word. Uh, plus 625, count me in. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I took an opportunity to, to go over some oh, of the stuff and with my dad. You can bet on the color her, of her outfit as well. Oh, is it not like? Like what, she's white. gonna come out in a random outfit. There's no like rehearsal or like oh, you none just of that know. information gets leaked at all. Someone like, will leak it. I'm, sh I'm sure it'll be leaked. But uh, white is the favorite at plus two fifty on the color of her outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the stats on that? Like the last like eight performers have been well. It's good that I mean, well, white dresses. I mean, I don't, know. I don't. I don't have that, but I, I do have the colors that she's worn in recent performance, and and yellow was worn at the uh, Memorial Day concert. So yellow is is a second favorite at plus three hundred. <laughs> uh all right what what else what else before we wrap okay. here richard uh let's see um oh who catches first coop or chase who catches a ball first yeah i just don't i don't i don't those are so hard i mean it depends on who gets the ball first i would you i think you have to go with cup yeah, I think, I think you have to. The guy, the guy yeah. caught an insane amount of balls this year. What, 150 catches approximately? Yeah, but I, you also think that like Ramsey is going to be shutting down 
chase like that is right. going to be their game plan yeah. you know like so cup is going to have free range on eli apple you know like, <laughs> right. like or any other slot linebacker that's going to try to cover them you know yeah like, i don't cup really I don't, has the best opportunity here i don't think the corners have any chance no Th- those I mean, uh, the the Bengals corners have no chance against Cup and Beckham. I really that's that's why I think the Rams won this game. Yeah, I mean, I, so I kept finding that I'm I'm coming across these bets. I like them, I like them, but I'm just not gonna take a prop bet that's not giving me value out of my money. You know, I'm not gonna take a a negative bet at all on any prop bet. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm going to choose ones that are against you know, the favorites on prop bets. I'm sure Vegas is going to be, ha- Vegas is going to be happy that you do that. But there's plenty that are available. We've talked <laughs> about a lot of them, right? We talked about the we color did. of like blue is, blue is the favorite. It's plus 200. Okay. But yellow is only 490 away. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. I, no, I, I see the rationale. Yeah. You always, you want that plus money for sure. I, I get it. Um, that's that's why if, if there's a couple of these favorites I've talked about, I'll, I'll probably put them in the same game parlay together and, and uh, increase my odds and increase my odds of probably losing. Yeah. <laughs> but what do you think about that parlay I put up? I mean, the Rams, if they can come out and they're going to they're going to come out quick. Right. I mean, the Bengals in the last like I think both games or the, the other game, the third game, they've started out not winning the first quarter and coming towards a deficit. So I think the Rams have an opportunity to be leading in the first quarter strong. Like I think that opportunity is very strong there and OBJ scoring a touchdown. I mean, you, 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 you've mentioned, no, I, I don't so mind times it. how many, yeah. yeah, I don't mind. I it. like, I like that. I like that parlay right there. All right, All right Rich. Well, what else um, you got? that I'm out, man. The national anthem was my, that was my, uh, I was just leading up to that one, really. (laughs) But uh, I did did listen to your, your pod today, um, the waste management preview. And I really enjoyed that you and Tim, and I really hope Tim makes it there. Okay. And did he make it there? Okay. He, he just, he actually texted me while, uh, while we're recording that he, he arrived safely. So good, good. We'll be hearing from uh, updates on the grounds from Tim this week. So, I mean, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. That would be an incredible place to go see. In oh, yeah, person, for know? sure. So. Yes. Yeah. Well, Rich, I, I appreciate you making an appearance and uh, we, we really went deep into the prop game here and uh, we'll, we'll certainly give our best bets out on, uh, on the page here uh, before, for the game Sunday. Great. My sound keeps going in and out. I'm not sure what's happening, but um, so uh, best bets on Saturday or Sunday, we'll have those available um, and we'll piece this together with the first part of the Super Bowl preview and on Friday, that'll be released. So thanks, Rich. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, Phil. I always appreciate this. And we'll get you on for some golf soon. We can really, yeah, we can talk about your DFS domination. Yeah. Well, honestly, it's just uh, the only thing I've been playing is snake draft. That's the only thing I've been playing on that. You know, do you know what snake draft is? I know what snake draft is. I don't know how it yeah. relates to Each draft. One, per- one person gets one. Oh, person, okay. You know? Okay. So okay. You, I haven't done that. Yeah, I haven't done that on on DraftKings. Gotcha. Yeah, Yeah. we'll have to talk about that. It's far more successful. (laughs) All right, check us out on YouTube. Um, We've had some videos up there, of course, and Instagram and Facebook. So continue following us. Thank you for listening to the Super Bowl Preview Pod. Take care. We'll see you next time.